Welcome to Superior Profit Morning Market Meeting, 18th April 2019. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. As usual, I will not take time to introduce myself. I will rather use the time for analyzing the market. If you are interested to find out more about me, the company or its trading systems and products, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profit trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. This session is meant for a demonstration of top-down, bottom-up and insight-based identification of trade opportunities using Q systems. This is different from the weekly market roundup where I usually carry out a top-down analysis. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. In today's session, I'm going to look at the global markets using technical charts. Then I will demonstrate how we can find some trading opportunities, shorting opportunities in this case from stocks that are hitting weekly memory resistance. That would be a bottom up analysis. We'll start with Q scans, sonar scans. And once we identify some tradable charts, we will look at the stocks, fundamentals and industry. Then we will try to find out possible buying opportunities from top down analysis. First bottom up and then top down analysis from sector drilling down into industry, drilling down into stocks, fundamentals, and finally technicals. Further ahead, we are going to use Q Edge Insight to identify possible value buying opportunities. And if we have time, we'll go through some of the latest trade ideas from our traders forum. If I don't have time, you can always visit the traders forum from our website. From our homepage, you can click on the forum picture that will take you to the forum. You will find interesting trading ideas here, both for bullish trades as well as bearish trades, all using 360 degrees analysis that is analyzing stocks, fundamentals, technicals, as well as industry strength. Let's start with global market technical analysis. We'll start with Australia market. I'm using Q Global for analyzing global market. I'm opening the Australian index with our default weekly, daily at a glance template. After displaying the bullish headwind at the very bottom, AXJO went up for many weeks. The backdrop candle color was cyan bullish until this week. And after that, it is gradually going up, but the color turned yellow. This week, it is near the memory resistance line in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, price is creating a triple top. We had a bear release signal here and then again, one day earlier, price stopped at the memory support line and below the watermark resistance line. There is no clear trend in the daily chart. 
we would avoid taking any long or short trade in AXJO right now. Let's look at China market. CSI 300 index. It is continuing to go up, though the weekly candle color has turned yellow for two weeks now. In the daily chart, price displayed a bearish headwind today. The weekly candle is yellow, the daily candle is also yellow. The daily candle has a lower tail. If the lower tail was not there, then we could take a bearish headwind reversal trade today at market close. Because of the daily candle shape being indecisive, we wouldn't take a short trade at market close. If you are watching CSI 300 tomorrow near market open, you may see if it is continuing to go down and if it goes down, then you may use the intraday fine tune chart to take a low risk short trade in CSI 300. As I often mention that instead of shorting CSI 300 or a country's index, it may be better to drill down into the index components find a fundamentally weak stock and also a stock that is in a weak industry and short that instead of shorting the index itself. By doing that, you are able to align more and more forces in your trades favor and you will have higher likelihood of success taking those trades. That is true for any market, for the USA market instead of shorting QQQ, or instead of going long QQQ, that is the NASDAQ ETF, you could drill down into the components, find strong or weak stocks as per the market's direction in terms of fundamental technical industry and take those trades. Then you will have better probability of success. You could look into a possible shorting opportunity in CSI 300 tomorrow if it continues to go down or even better in one of the weak stocks in CSI 300. What about Hong Kong market? Dot HSI. Hong Kong market was going up also. Still, it is in an uptrend in the weekly chart. However, for two weeks, the weekly candle color has turned yellow, neutral, displayed a bearish headwind signal one week earlier. In the daily chart, price is going up in an uptrend. However, it is too close to the upper boundary level. And also the candle color at the right edge is yellow there is no Q trade opportunity in HSI right now. India market, Nifty 50 index. In the weekly chart, price went up. Here also weekly has turned yellow for two weeks and price is at a watermark resistance in the weekly chart. In the daily, it displayed a bearish headwind signal. Price fell down a little bit from there. Price retested the same area and now creating a false upside breakout at the watermark that was created by the bearish headwind signal. There is no trade setup in NSEI, the Nifty 50 index. It is still bullish in the daily chart. The traffic light candle color is green. Therefore, we are not going to take any short trade. At the same time, it is at a longer term watermark resistance in the weekly chart. And in daily, we have a 
very shape candle so we are not going to take any long trade either you may watch to see what happens with the nifty index in india election is going on that may lead to some uncertainty it may be safer not to take many new trades in india or in any country during the election UK index, FTSE, FTSE. Weekly is in an uptrend. Daily also is in an uptrend. Daily is too close to the upper boundary level. Traffic light candle color is yellow in the daily chart. Backdrop candle color is yellow in the weekly chart. The stock is in an uptrend, however, there is no immediate trading opportunity. I will look at the USA market futures later. If we, if we look at the news today, there are many major events that may move the market. I am looking at the events calendar from Zenith. This is today's death, 18th April. You can see there are several high important, several high importance events, some at 8.30 and one at 10 a.m. We'll have a look at the futures after 8.30 a.m. Then the impact of the 8.30 news may be visible. Let's continue with the next topic, finding possible shorting opportunities from stocks that are hitting weekly memory resistance, that is using a bottom-up analysis. In Q Global, that runs on Meta stock, and also in Q Elite, that runs on TradeStation, we have sonar scans that we can run to find out stocks that are hitting longer term weekly auto smart trend lines we call memory lines let me use meta stock for that we are going to look for stocks that are at memory resistance i have selected weekly interval and i am running it on 312 stocks in the usa market that have liquid options therefore the options are expected to be with narrow spread. Let me run the exploration. It is going through the 312 stocks. I don't store any data. I don't store any local data on my computer. It is going to the Refinitive system, Zenith system, getting the data, doing all the calculations. The progress bar shows how many stocks it has completed already. The calculation is done. These are the stocks, nine stocks. Out of 312, it found nine stocks that are hitting longer term weekly memory resistance. Now we will open them with the default weekly daily at a glance template one by one and see if there is a Q trade setup. What is a Q trade setup? We have identified four market conditions and for the market conditions for each of them we have identified only one trade setup go with flow for trending market headwind for reversing market box setup for sideways and pound setup for exhausting market conditions each of those trade setups are associated with an unambiguous checklist after you use the systems for a while, you may look at a chart and within a few seconds, you can decide if there is a valid trade setup or not. In the beginning, if you are starting to use Q systems, you may stick to the standard Q trade setups. Those were developed after a lot of research. They have very high success rate, as you can find out from the trade ideas shared in our traders forum. Once you are 
comfortable with all the setups, you can take them intuitively in a few seconds. You can identify a setup, then you may combine the signals to improvise. Let me demonstrate how I use the Q systems on live market. We found nine stocks that are hitting weekly memory resistance line. I'm going to open them one by one. AKS, this has no trade setup. Let me scroll through them. If I find a valid trade setup, I will stop. And I'm going to stop at a short trade setup because these are the stocks where the price is hitting weekly memory resistance. Because it is hitting memory resistance, I'm going to look for shorting opportunity. This stock, AL, AMLP, it is looking interesting because it is hitting the weekly memory resistance. Initially price went up strongly, but the pace was slowing down. And this week we have a very bearish shape and bearish color candle. In the daily chart, it was struggling to go up. When a stock struggles to go up, we have many watermark resistances at nearby price levels. And now price is coming down. There is a memory support line nearby and on top we have memory resistance. We call the stock is in a triangle pattern. The direction is not clear in the daily chart. So we may not take a short trade in this instrument. AM LP happens to be a fund, it is not a stock. So what we may do, we may drill into the fund and look into the constituent stocks. This is similar to what I shared earlier when discussing China index. I mentioned that instead of shorting the index, tomorrow if it starts to go down, you may drill down, find weak fundamental stock, weak technical stock, weak industry stock and short that. AMLP, this fund is looking weak, not bearish, but it is struggling to go up. Instead of waiting for the fund to go down, you may identify a weak stock inside the fund and short that. That would give you a better success rate. Higher probability trade with greater reward risk ratio. We'll look into the constituents of AMLP for that, we will use Zenith AMLP. This is Alps Alerian. I don't know, Alerian, Alerian, MLP ETF. The fund tries to track energy infrastructure MLP asset class. That is enough for us to know. Now, these are the stocks, the biggest components is Enterprise Products Partnership. I found this fund today while preparing for today's session. And it was interesting because this fund happens to have a stock, Enterprise Products Partnership, that is EPD that I shared in the forum yesterday. Let's look at the forum post. I identified the trade in a different way. This is the trade idea, stock trade idea I shared yesterday before market close. 17th April, it was on EPD, the same stock that is the biggest constituent of the fund. And the snapshots were as of around 3.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let's look at the snapshots. Earlier, energy was getting stronger. It was lagging oil commodity, but it was starting to get stronger. You can see that from the score changing color to cyan. How far? Over last two days and one day. And 
this is a snapshot around 3 10 pm eastern standard time 17th april using the real time sector scorecard using the real time data real time analysis i could see energy is weakening and from the base column i could see that it was the most decelerating sector a few days ago i shared a blog in our blog page mentioning that if you want to make profit you can buy into strong industry strong sectors but you can also buy into industries and sectors that are strengthening or accelerating you will be able to buy the stocks at a lower price if you use acceleration in addition to or sometimes instead of the strength of the sector or industry so energy was decelerating heavily as a sector and i found this stock epd how did i find it i found it from a scan breakout short scan that is also in q global and q elite i ran the breakout scan yesterday on stocks that were at pendulum high pendulum high meaning price extreme high if you are following my trades in the forum or twitter page then you know i have a tendency to look for shorting opportunities at the top and buying opportunities at the bottom that is shorting overbought and overvalued stocks fundamentally overvalued and technically overbought and buying value stocks fundamentally that are oversold we can find those trading opportunities by running q scans combining multiple q scans this trade idea i found by combining two scans looking for stocks at pendulum high and breaking down breaking down below memory support and i noticed that the weekly came near memory resistance then we had a very bearish shape bearish color candle in daily it displayed a bearish headwind since then price is not able to go up price is also resisted by memory resistance we have a lower high and lower low now we had a magenta color candle one day ago however at that time price was above the memory support so we would not be shorting at that time if the memory support was not there this magenta candle gave us a possible trend following short trade setup but we would wait and we could short it right at the point price was going below the memory support line and this snapshot is as of around 3 10 pm we'll have a look at the stock using live system how it ended up let's continue with the analysis that i shared technically this was looking like rolling over is it very bearish no not very bearish because weekly is still going up and in daily there is a memory support nearby i mentioned about that at the same time the relative performance is very weak and if you were watching the usa market last few days you noticed that price was trying to go down but it recovered for several days whereas this stock did not recover yesterday at least as of the time i shared the snapshot it was looking bearish underperforming the market and i looked at its fundamentals as i always do as part of 360 degrees analysis the stock was overvalued stock shown by magenta color score under valuation column and earnings growth though positive it was decelerating from previous quarter these are the kinds of stocks that i like to short not the best short opportunity because there is a memory support nearby but it was looking weak enough this is what i meant by improvising a trade setup this may not be a standard q trade setup but once you are conversant with the system and you look at the weakness at the fundamental level at the industry sector level then you are able to improvise and if the trade doesn't work out we are always 
going to take small loss and come out. We are not going to hold on to it, hold on to a losing trade and turn it into a bigger loss. That we will not do. So this was an improvised trade. It was interesting for me that I found this yesterday using the scan by combining short breakout at pendulum high, price extreme high. That is my tendency to try to short weak stocks at the top. If I run it on the same list of stocks using daily interval and let the result of one exploration go to the other one, I will run the sonar for finding stocks at extreme high first and then try to find stocks that are breaking out. Now it is going to run the two scans one by one. First, it found 72 stocks that are at price extreme high, and now it found eight stocks that are breaking down, and EPD is one of them. So I found the stock in this manner by combining two sonar scans, whereas today I ran another scan looking for stocks at weekly memory resistance. Then I found a fund. I was not going to short the fund, so I looked at its constituents and I found the same stocks. Instead of AMLP, I could go and short EPD. And we can see now from the live system that it indeed closed at the very bottom, looking quite weak. That was one stock that I found as a possible short candidate, improvised short candidate from the list of stocks that we found that are hitting memory resistance in the weekly chart. Let me try to get to that list again. At memory trend line resistance report, AMLP, let's open that chart. AMLP. Let me continue with the list. I think I found another shortable stock. This is the other stock. American Excel manufacturer, AXL. It is at a resistance, not only in the weekly chart, but also in the daily chart. It, it is not going to give me a trend following short trend, but it is giving me other trade setups. One of the trade setups that I have now is a valid headwind short trade setup. We have a bearish headwind signal at the close of yesterday. We have yellow candle color in the weekly chart. Prices near upper boundary level. So this is meeting all the requirements for the headwind short trade setup. We could take it yesterday at market close using the headwind short trade setup. This is also giving us additional signals that are in favor of the short trade. One is that it is breaking below the memory support. The supports provide robust support, memory supports, and when they are broken, that is also significant. And it broke the memory support with very bullish shape not bullish with very bearish shape candle. And it is also turning down from memory resistance. Relative performance is weak. So we have a reversal type. It's not a trend following, but a reversal type trade setup in AXL. In fact, it also gave us a bounce trade setup in the short direction because it hit the memory resistance in both weekly and daily with very high activity and it dropped. So that is meeting the checklist conditions for 
bounds short trade setup. We have three trade setups on the same day. One is a very scheduling trade setup, one is a bounce short trade setup, and another is a third one is a breakout short trade setup. Let's check out its fundamentals. In Q Vital, we can type any symbol and it will carry out the fundamental and peer analysis. Excel. It carries out three steps. First, it is retrieving the basic information about the stock. Let me confirm the symbol name. Excel, yes. It is slow. Let me try to find it out from edge. Sometimes when I'm running the webinar, the system tends to be a bit slow. Excel. Excel is optimally valued. We can see that from the science code under valuation column, but earnings growth is poor. Both during the quarterly periods, it is slowing down for three quarters and for three years also, it is slowing down, turning from positive to negative, both for yearly yearly earnings growth and quarterly earnings growth. So we have reasons to take a short trade. Let's do a peer analysis by clicking the these people standing on the podium. That will also give me the industry. The industry is not weak. Auto parts and equipment industry, though the base columns are showing that its rate of going up is slowing down. Is that enough for me to take a trade? One thing is for sure that is not enough to take a trend following short trade. However, in this case, we are not taking a trend following short trade. The stock was going up. That is in sync with the fact that the industry was strong and then the industry's rate of change reduced that showed up as deceleration. If you combine that fact with the technical analysis where we are taking a reversal trade, you'd probably be okay to take a reversal trade setup. Also the stop is very close by. Because this is earning session, let's look at the stocks earning state 2nd May. So if you were taking any short trade in AXL, you may keep the earning state in mind, either close the trade before that or use strategies, probably using options that you don't end up with a big loss if the stock moves against you. Those were two stocks I found using the bottom up analysis, looking for stocks that are hitting weekly memory resistance. Now let me carry out a top down analysis starting with QH and I will find UAL as a possible buying opportunity. Let's start with QH. QH calculates everything in real time, sector, industry, rotation analysis, stock fundamental peer analysis of 1500 stocks. And it does that in memory cache. It updates the view when I click this refresh from memory cache button. I did that just now. Let me sort the data by one day score. And we can see instantly industrial sector is the best performer yesterday. Also, it is gradually improving strength. The base column five days is showing that over five days, it is in fact the most accelerating sector. There is no other sector that is having higher base five day score than industrial. So it's highly accelerating sector and also the strongest sector now. That would be a good place to look for buying opportunities. So let's drill down. We have these industries in the industrials sector. 
we can double click on the one day column to sort it in ascending or descending order. We can double click again to reverse the sort order. Because the sector is strong, we are going to look for strong industries. Airlines is one of them, railroads is one of them, trucking is one of them. All these three are related to transportation. That shows that transportation as a whole is doing very well. Airlines is interesting because it was magenta earlier, now turning into strength. That may give us lucrative buying opportunities. So I drill down into that. There are multiple stocks. I sort by the valuation column and I find several stocks that are with optimal valuation, four of them. Out of them, out of the four, three has bright green earnings growth in the latest quarter. For short term trading, latest quarter data is enough. However, if I look at longer periods, then I can see UAL has the best earnings growth for the last three quarters and also the last year. In fact, over all the periods, if we combine, it has best earnings growth. It has better revenue growth as well. Probably ALGT is the only stock that also has good revenue growth, relatively speaking. However, ALGT is overvalued. If I combine valuation and earnings growth, then EAL is the best candidate. It went up by 4.7% yesterday. Let's see if it has a trading opportunity. We can use Q Global or Q Elite both. Let's use Q Elite on Tristation for UAL. This is looking interesting. In the weekly chart, it broke out of the triangle pattern, broke out of the memory resistance. In the daily chart, it displayed the bullish headwind reversal signal right at the very bottom. It could catch the very bottom. These signals are extremely useful. Several Q traders are fond of taking the go with flow trend following trend. Trend is our friend and following trades do very well. At the same time, I keep mentioning that other Q trade setups when all the checklist conditions are met, they have equal success rate as the go with flow trade setups. And that you can see from the trade ideas that I share from the traders forum. When the bullish headwind came at minimum, though price was at the very bottom, if you had a short trade, you would protect profit with trailing stop. That would be a wise idea because price went up from there. Price came from lower boundary straight to upper boundary, didn't pull back along the way. Therefore, it didn't give us any go with flow trend following trade setup. Then it moved sideways for a while and yesterday it broke out broke out of the memory resistance with a gap up. Looking at that, you could look at the intraday fine tune chart and try to take a position after market open. This is looking bullish. The industry is strong and fundamentally we saw this is the best stock in the airlines industry. If you are going to buy it now, you would probably put stop somewhere below this gap up candle slow. And you may buy it only if price is able to go above the high of previous day. That would be a breakout trade setup. You may also consider it as a viable gap trade setup. You may notice that we had extreme bullish pressure. That is not required condition for go with flow trade setup, for, but for a breakout trade setup, it is good to have extreme bullish pressure that we have now in UA.
sorry about that. Let me, my audio was off. Let me start with QH again. In QH inside, we have best performing and best performing stocks under various categories. Some people prefer to trade value stocks. Some people prefer to trade growth stocks. Some are comfortable trading both. One of my favorite categories is best performing optimally value stocks. If you find a buying opportunity from them, then you will be able to catch them at a lower price. I found EXPR. Let's look at its industry, apparel retail industry. It was very weak earlier. Score was in magenta color. Over five days, score is still not cyan, but the increasing strength is shown by the two days and one day period. Usually, I prefer to look at the five days score for industry sector analysis because these are higher level factors, industry and sector or the market. Five days avoids noise. However, when I am looking at a sector or industry that is turning around, then I look into finite retail two day and one day score. And the one day scores are calculated in real time. Therefore, yesterday before market close, I could see that apparel retail is strengthening. And if I look at the stock itself, EXPR, it is a value stock. We knew it would be a value stock because it came from the inside category. Let's look at the technical charts. EXPR, and this is looking interesting. In fact, one day ago, we had a bullish headwind signal, yellow traffic light candle in the daily chart, and weekly was, I think, at least yellow by that time because it is cyan now. So I'm assuming it was at least yellow yesterday, one day ago. And that gave us a possible bullish headwind long trade setup. However, you don't take the long trade on the yellow candle because that candle had an upper tail. Instead, we would wait for one more day and take the long position yesterday near market open. Now we have a bullish headwind in the weekly chart also and price created a false downside breakout. We had extreme bullish pressure yesterday. This could be taken at yesterday's market open, near market open as a reversal trade setup. Let's look at the earnings period, earnings date, EXPR. Earnings is on 29th May, still several days away. You could use creative option strategies to trade that. We carried out three different kinds of analysis, one using bottom-up analysis, starting with Q scan, and we found two shorting opportunities. We used top-down analysis, found one possible buying opportunity in United Airlines, and finally, we used the QH Insight and found a possible buying opportunity, value buying opportunity at a very low price in a strengthening industry, that is EXPR. Let's look at USA market futures. The 8.30 market events are over now. Here I have put together the four market futures using daily interval and at the top I have them using weekly interval. For the week, all of them are green. All, not, not all of them are positive. Russell 2000, 
futures is actually down and Emini is also down for the week. So we have two of them down and two of them up for the week. And for the day, all of them are up. Let's look at Emini, S&P 500 future. I'm going to change the template using hotkeys so that I have the watermark levels. The weekly chart is showing that it is going up. This week's candle shape is so far indecisive. Color is also neutral indecisive. Tail is going up and it is being supported by memory support. So we are not going to look for any short trend until it can break below this memory support line. And you will probably see several, if not all of the futures have memory support. This is NQ has a memory support line in the daily chart price is going up. We are not going to look for short trade until that memory is broken. Dow Jones Industrials Futures YM also has a memory support line. And Russell 2000 RTY also has a memory support line now inside a triangle pattern. RTY is the weakest. It is the only one that is inside a triangle pattern. So if you are going to take a short trade, you may take that in RTY. And going by our earlier discussion, instead of shorting RTY or IWM, the ETF, you may look for small cap stocks, fundamentally weak stocks that are starting to go down. Let me look at this stock MHLT. This is a stock that I mentioned in the last market roundup. This dropped a lot. It is in the financials industry. Then it is creating a nice base in the weekly chart. The weekly candle colors are cyan. Daily is creating a base. It's not moving up or down. If it can break above the watermark resistance, then you may look for a buying opportunity. That hasn't happened yet. And if we look at the volatility chart for the stock, then you will see that it is inside squeeze. It is inside extreme squeeze. If the stock can break out of the squeeze, that can give a low risk, high reward trading opportunity. Let's go through some other trades that I shared in the Traders Forum. By the way, today I posted a topic in the forum, RIC, that is Reuters Identification Code. Maybe we call it Refinitive Identification Code of the stocks with liquid options. When I ran the Metastock scan, I ran it on the US stock with liquid options. These symbols, if I open it, they have some suffix, sometimes dot o, sometimes dot k, sometimes no suffix. These are different from the ticker symbols because we have a suffix. I submitted the post in the forum where you can find the USA market stocks with liquid options and they are Reuters code. If you are using Q Elite, you wouldn't need it, but you would need it if you are using the scanning feature in Q Global on Metastar. Going back to the forum, I discussed EPD that I shared yesterday. Let's look at the previous forum post. If you are observing my webinars, you know I don't have the habit of picking and choosing. We can go through them sequentially. This was on HPQ, Hewlett Packard. When I shared it six days ago, April 12th, as of 1.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is how the 360 degrees analysis snapshots look like. 
the industry was strong for a while, but it was weakening. The paste column was showing that clearly. Industry was weakening. However, the stock has good valuation. And next earnings is some distance away, 28th May. It was a value stock and I looked at the chart. It created a false downside breakout in the weekly chart at this longer term watermark support level. The weekly candle color turned bullish both in shape and color. And in the daily chart, it broke out of the triangle pattern, broke out of the memory resistance. That looked like a good buying opportunity to me. Breakout buy trade setup. And I had also analyzed the option volatility that was showing that 22 strike of June would be a good choice if I wanted to take an out of the money option. Why June strike? Because that would be after the next earnings. Why 22? Because there the volatility was lowest. That is where the 22 is, the lowest volume. So I bought that and I bought it on this day. This is a follow-up post. Then it went up for two days. It hit the yellow descending direction line. Next day it tried to go up but was going down. This was an intraday chart. The market was looking bearish. How did I know that? I always, not always, but sometimes I have both long and short trades. The long trades I have are in value stocks and short trades I have are in overvalued stocks usually. And I saw in my portfolio, the value stocks are doing well and most of them were in defensive sectors. Whereas the overvalued stocks, the short trades, are doing even better, they were falling. The defensive stocks are holding well, but the overbought stocks, overvalued stocks, where I had short positions, they were giving even higher profit. Looking at that, I decided to manage this trade on HPQ. This was the only information technology sector stock that I was holding as a bullish position. How did I manage it? When I initially opened the bullish position, I bought the out of the money call option at 25 cents. And when I decided to manage it, then it was selling at 31 cents. So I closed enough lots so that I get my investment money back. Now I am still holding some lots, but I am not in a hurry. I have got my money back. Remember, I shared this snapshot as an intraday snapshot. I was watching the market. Let's see how HPQ ended the day yesterday. HPQ. It recovered somewhat, as we can see from the little lower tail. I have booked my profit, I have taken my money back so I can now hold on to it. I have far out of the money, 22 call strike, long position. Let's try to cover one more forum post. Bullish breakout in food retail industry. I think that was also a long position in Kroger. You may look at it. Let me look at a short trade setup. AXP, okay, let's have a look at this. It's earnings is today actually. We never know the outcome of a trade in advance. We do the analysis as of the time we do them. This was shared on April 9th. And this at the 360 degree snapshot, the industry was weak. The paste column was showing that it is not strong either, it was not strong. American Express, AXP was overvalued at that time and the earnings growth was slowing down from 25% to 
and in the technical charts the weekly had a bearish color bearish vector of color the relative performance was showing it was hugely underperforming the market and in the daily chart it was breaking below trend line support breaking below the triangle pattern so i thought it could be a shorting opportunity earnings was today so uh, 18th april if you took the trade on this day you would use a strategy that doesn't result in huge loss if the stock went up it was a possible shorting candidate breakout shorting candidate i don't know how it is going to do today after earnings but the analysis at that time was showing that it has more likelihood of dropping we can look at xp xp yesterday's close was 11176 last price 110.91 so it is down 0.76 percent we will see how it does after market open you may go through all the other forum posts they are not meant to be trade ideas not meant to be trade tips but they are meant to be an application of Q systems and live systems and you may find very nice tradable opportunities from there after your own analysis you may decide to take those trades as well that is all the time we have for today sorry for the audio disruption in the middle i thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you again in the next session have a great week and trade profitably.